Hey everybody, Ronaldo Offerman here. Today I'm going to talk to you about building a proper rig for your Arceus Media Server. Now I'm going to build basically a medium level rig. This could go absolutely more insane, you know, insanely faster or have external hard or extra hard drives in raid mode, whatever the case may be. But what I needed is I have to build about six of these things. So, you know, I wanted to keep them all within a moderate budget. But they're fast enough that I can run eight layers and still have two of them be live video at 1080p. So clearly this is doing the job. Your mileage may vary, so you really want to kind of sit down and assess of what you're wanting. If you're going to be playing a lot of 4K, you may want to opt for a PCIe SSD or to be an internal SSD um, you know, that actually integrates into your motherboard. I'm going to try to dumb these down to as simple terms as possible. But let's go ahead and first look at the parts. Most important thing is your motherboard. Now, I chose to use a socket 1150. All right. And 1150 is an older socket, but the processes that are in it are fast enough to run uh, Arceus with no issue. The reason I chose 1150 is because basically the price has really come down considerably. Now, one of the important things when you're building a computer is to remember that, yes, you could buy the absolute fastest and within two weeks, that dropped down in price completely. So I just always go with medium, high end to medium, because that way if I need to upgrade, I can upgrade to something even faster within a month or two and still spend less than I would have done buying a brand, you know, or buying the latest and greatest right off the bat. I am a big fan of Gigabyte boards, and this is from somebody who's been using Asus for a long time. Big fan of Gigabyte. I got the Z97X Gaming. This is a step up from the motherboard that I've currently been using just because there's a few extra things. We're going to take our SLI off to the side. We're not going to be doing that. We've got extra cables. Great. We've got this. We'll kind of move all this. Manuals. Well, we're men. We don't need manuals. And, oh, I'm sure I offended somebody with that comment. Keep in mind, it's all jokes, people. So let's take a look at this motherboard and why I chose it. Now, I'm not going to do full reviews on it. And I don't want to open the whole thing right now, but we'll kind of look at it over here, actually. So, first of all, big fan of the three-way crossfire or two-way SLIs. Basically, it just means that I have three PCI-16. Now, remember, they're shared. So, if you run three, of, uh, three actual video cards on here, you are going to lose a little bit of bandwidth on each one. But we're not doing high-end gaming, so that's not really the end of the world. Another important thing is that this particular motherboard does allow integrated video and an external video card at the same time. This is really important because we're going to use the integrated video for the actual RKS user interface, and then we're going to use our card for external video. Now, each of the cards that I chose can do, you know, uh, NVIDIA supports up to four heads out. We'll cover that a little bit. Uh, big fan of the overall layout as far as that it's going to be really easy for me to access what I need. There's a lot of motherboards that are cramped, and I absolutely hate that. Uh, it does have a really good sound card in it, so I'm not going to worry about getting an external sound card. It does have Gigabyte Ethernet built in. This is really important when you're using ClingNet. And, of course, you have 6 SATA 3 and SATA Express. So you can put a really nice hard drive in there with no problem. Now, in this case, I'm still going to be using the old hard drive that I had from the previous rig. Uh, that particular hard drive is just a 1 terabyte standard drive. It's not a solid state. But I will be upgrading that pretty soon. I actually have a few SSDs laying around. So we're going to go and lay off that off to this side. Next, we have the processor. Now, in this case, I chose the 4590i5. The difference between the i5 and the i7 is hyper-threading. Uh, what I've noticed is in this case, it's not really the end of the world that I don't have it, but I was able to buy a really fast i5 for less than 200 bucks. This one easily handles everything that I need. And again, this is the 4590 from Intel. RAM, look, I don't care what anybody says, all RAM comes from the same factory, and that's why years ago, I want to say it was like the late 90s, and it happened in the mid-2000s, when the earthquake destroyed that factory, nobody had RAM. Um, I just went with the HyperX, uh, I'm, I actually have had no issues with the HyperX, and I just got 16 gigs. So, really important that you match your RAM with the motherboard, I don't really want to cover all that. If you don't understand that, don't be building a computer. And... The GeForce 960. I got the EVGA. Big fan of their video cards. Uh, for the price, for the value, it's great. So, the thing I, got, I liked about this card, and I've, I already use it in my rig. First of all, it's huge, and probably gonna have to modify the. Uh, definitely gonna have to modify the uh, case that I bought for this. Okay. But one of the things that I really like about the EVGA card. Let me make sure I got everything out of there. Okay. 
is that it doesn't use any outdated standards, uh, meaning that it's no proprietary connectors or anything like that, which is common sense, but you really want to look at that to make sure. This guy uses DisplayPort, and there's nothing outdated about DisplayPort. So we've got one DisplayPort, you have uh, HDMI, but this, as a, this HDMI does have analog out, or something has to be analog out, because I can actually use an HDMI to VGA, and it'll run just fine. And then also, of course, we have DVI-I, not DVI-D. For those of you that are not familiar with the difference, this is a DVI to VGA pack passive adapter. It will not work on DVI-D because it's DVI, that means DVI digital. DVI-I interlace has both digital and analog feed. If you want to convert DVI-D to analog, you need an active converter. This is not an active converter. These are the little 50 cent converters. So, uh, big card, big cooling fans. It'll keep things running smoothly. When it comes to graphics, this is the most important thing with Arceus, you want, or any media server, you want to make sure you've got proper cooling going to your actual media or video card. And last but not least is power supply. Now, I usually have, uh, I use a modular power supply, which is a power supply that you can detach the cables, so you only use the cables that I uh, that you need. I actually ran out of power supplies because I'm building one extra computer than I thought I uh, that I needed. So I'm using one that I had before. This is uh, one of the Antec Earthwatts. Not the greatest power supply, but it'll run everything that I need until I can pick up the modular power supplies that I prefer to go with. So anyhow, that's it for this video. Tune into the next one. We're going to put it all together. We'll also talk about the case and chopping it up and everything else. Thanks for watching.